I am a man of the north. Names like Alta Moscow, Six Mile Cross, and Ballygolly roll off my tongue like water over a mill wheel. I am made of rain, nettles and thick moss, trees and wind. I am stories, handed down like heirlooms. Cucullin, Anya, me. War, church, famine, fairies. I could be an Irish man anywhere in the world. But somehow I have been delivered back to this place. Home. Home. What does it mean? Home. Do you remember who used to live here? It's old Mrs. Rogers' house, isn't it? Was. That is a doornail a while ago. But don't worry. I checked the place for ghosts. Come on. Let's get you settled. There's not much in here, as you can see. But I stuffed off earlier. Got a few of the basics. Tea bags, milk, sugar, bread, peanut butter. There's a the kettle. Do you want me to light a bit of a fire for you? No. You know where to find me, okay? St. Anthony and St. Jude. A big help to me.
Dear God, Matt, look at yourself. What is going on with you? You're a great writer, Matt. Or at least you were. But that was 10 years ago. 10 years and not even an essay or a review. You're a writer, writers write. That's what they do. You need to stop running. When was the last time you were back in Ireland? <sighs> 10? 20 years ago? 26. 26 years. Whoa. What the fuck did they do to you back there? When I was a boy, my best friend Declan and I built a dam to mark the beginning of summer. Every year we went to the same bend in the river at the bottom of Paggy McKenna's Meadow. There was a spot there right next to an old apple orchard where the river yawned against a deep mossy bank, creating a wide crescential well that was just perfect for a swimming hole. We'd strip down to our shorts and wade into the river, dragging big clots of mucky sod that we dug from the bank, slapping them down in a row on the riverbed, embracing them with large stones and thick stubby branches, the water rising about our ankles, until at last we could take a run from the field and leap, knowing it was deep enough to catch us when we fell.
lovely fur coat he was wearing too, I can tell you. Fox, I think it was. I don't understand. Was it a man or a woman? Oh, for God's sake. It was a man, as far as I can tell, wearing a fur coat and a headscarf of an indeterminate fabric. We exchanged pleasantries and I went on my way. Simple as that. I'm not about to cast aspersions on his or her or its gender. It's no business of mine, and nor should it be any of yours. Morning, Joe. Good morning, Kate. What's all the excitement this morning? Seems Pat had a bit of a fright this morning. Pat's only after seeing some stranger coming out of old Mrs. Rogers' turf shed like a ghost. Scared the life out of him. He was wearing a fur coat and a fur scarf. Anyway, I'm going to head on home here. I'll need to lay down for a bit. Uh, two stamps, please, Joe. And if you would put those in the box oh, for sure me. Like... Big day, Pat. Ah, oh, no, nothing new to me. Sure, if we were in New York, nobody would pass a bit of remarks. Was he good looking? Sure, don't you know him? Me? How would I know him? Father Donnelly's brother. The lad that went away to America about 25 years ago. The writer. Sure, wasn't he a neighbour of yours? Matt, I think his name was. Will that be everything for today, Katie? Katie? Yes, Joe, thank you. Yes, uh all the best. All the best, Katie. See, we still have managed to get them bastards out. Jerry, could you slow down a bit? Jerry, please. Jesus Christ. Who the fuck was that with Father Donnelly? It looked a bit like Matt. When did that fucker get back here? Hey, come on, we're gonna enter across for a pint. You better not think he's moving back home around here. I can tell you that.
No, I did. Liar. Still as beautiful as ever. I'm sorry. That's terrible. I just got back. It's been weird. Oh, were you away? Um, how are you uh, getting on at the cottage on your own? How do you know where I'm staying? Oh, you have been away too long if you think a yank can't land back here without everybody for a 20-mile radius having an opinion about it. The mailman. I was in the post office yesterday when he came in. He looked like he'd seen a ghost. Just glad to see you're not doing your shopping in a skirt and a pair of high heels. <laughs> it was cold. I didn't have a jacket. You don't have to convince me you're not gay. I remember. You two know each other? Declan. Well, since you've been in one of these, I suppose. 25 years. Give or take a wedding or two. Did we scare you that badly? I never much believed in fairy tales. Well, that's not true. I remember when you were little. 
You believed in all kinds of magic. Nana grew up. And that was a pity. It is a pity. I saw Katie at the store. A wee word of advice, my American brother. Steer clear of Katie. And a further piece of advice. Stay well clear of Declan Hughes. He's a dangerous man, Matt. Bet he's in here every Sunday on his knees with his tongue out waiting for the sacrament. Not in New York now, Matt. People around here have a way of doing things. Come on. Come with me. I can see you now, pegging the white flapping sheets in the breeze, and then the scullery, your hands in a bowl of dough kneading, a trace of flour in your hair like age. It was said you made the best loaf of bread in all of Elton Moscow, folded secrets into the dough, fed them to us. Pain. Love, loss, the flower of all that went unsaid, dissolved on the tongue like a mystery, bloomed in my heart like a rose. What madness drove you to the river? What might I have done to save you from that cold, wet grave? Mother, I am so sorry I didn't come home. Pies of cigarettes, please. Yep. What kind would you like? Those of honor. What's the damage? Uh, that's twenty-four seventy, please. Are you American? Almost. Twenty-four seventy. Wow. I have been gone too long. What part were you in, New York? How'd you guess? You sure don't look like no hick. <laughs> Very good. That's where I'm headed as soon as I get my act together. What, you don't like it here? <sighs> this hole. Surely it can't be that bad. Tell you what, why don't you take my job in here and I'll go out to your cottage and do your writing for you. How does that sound? Wow. Word does travel fast around here. And I heard about those women's clothes bit too. Pretty sure you've got a damn good excuse for that outfit. I do. It's called cold. Well, if you ever need warming up,
Jesus! Terry! You scared the shite out of me. What are you doing, checking up on me? Well, the last person living in this house had to be carried out feet first. <laughs> I'm taking no chances. Here. What's this? It's an old photo album. It was a mother's. You should have it. You're the one who wanted to rummage through the past. There's some of it there. What would you call this? Trouble. Father. Katie. Matt. <laughs> Lovely to see you. It's a fine day. Uh, yeah, it is. It's a, it's a lovely ah. day. It'd be nice to see a bit of sun. Oh, it'd be great to see the bit of sun. Great. Break the clouds. Mm. It'd be nice. Mm. Yeah, nice. Right, well, I'll be off. I've things to do. Good to see you. I'm not interrupting anything. Oh, yet. no, not at all. I was just on my way anyway. Have to see a man about a dog. Oh, Jesus, my timing's impeccable. What must he think of me showing up here like this? Have a look at the bright side. He'll never tell a soul. I hope not. Dad gonna kill me if he knew I was here. I was just bringing you a bit of food. Thanks. Tea. Hmm? Tea! We still do that in this country, don't we? Make the visitor a cup of tea. She did. She did keep a tidy wee house. But it's strange. Everything's still in the same place. It's like I've landed back in the past. <laughs> and are you back? Or are you just on a flying visit? I don't think I could make it around here anymore. Well, it has been my home for over 20 years. I'm sorry. Don't, please, don't. I should have written to you. You have nothing to apologize for. It was a long time ago. We were just kids, for God's sake. I think that you should have this back. Look, when I got there, it's hard to explain. I mean, it was crazy. Right from the moment the lads collected me from the airport. And then it all comes at you so fast. The newness. A month has gone by and then two months. And then in the blink of an eye, a year's gone by. And I see the Statue of Liberty one morning through the window of the van on my way to work. And I remember how much you wanted to see it. fucking killed me. Not enough for you to write to me even then. Don't worry about it, I saw it. Wasn't that impressed as it happens. I have to go.
You broke our mother's heart when you left, you know. She idolized you, that woman. Her son, the writer. Wow. And there was a story she could take to the shop every day. I'm not saying you killed her. You didn't. She had health issues in the end. Depression. Terrible, terrible depression, God love her. But you didn't fucking help it, Matt. You didn't fucking help it one bit. What did I ever do to you, brother? What did we ever do to you? You scared the life out of me. Sorry about that. I suppose you're going to go and put that in one of your books now too, are you? How did you know I'm a writer? Very good, you've been gone a long time. And you don't remember your neighbours. Didn't you come down and build a dam every year at the bottom of my field? Packy? I'd have to come down at the end of the summer and tumble it myself, of course. I thought you were dead years ago. That would explain the lack of a Christmas card. What are you doing out here, hiding behind hedges? Scaring people half to death? People must think you're mad. That'd be right. I'm getting madder by the day. I'm out patching holes in these hedges to keep the sheep in. You got yourself a nice wee house for your sojourn, I see. So it is a nice wee house. Poor old Mary. Dead a week in there before the mailman got a sniff of her. If she'd been on the Facebook, they'd have found her sooner. Old country's gone mad, if you ask me. They've disappeared. They're all indoors now, lost on their own little screens. You never see a child outside anymore. They wouldn't know their way down to the river if you led them by the ear. I have one wee word of advice for you, though. Watch that girl's husband doesn't catch her up here sniffing around your undergarments while he's out at work. I don't know how you operate these things over there in America, but around here you mess with a man like Declan Hughes, you better brace yourself for a storm. There's skeletons out here in these fields, you know. Skeletons of men every bit as smart as you or me. Men who didn't see the storm coming. What's well, changed since I've been gone? But at least there's peace now that the troubles have ended. Peace, me home. Where'd you read that shade? The trouble's not over in this country, boy. Not.
not as long as there's still an Englishman wearing a uniform. Don't kid yourself about that. never be over. Not till it's all one country again, the way the good Lord intended it. North to south, east to west, sea to shining sea. If it was up to me, there wouldn't even be a wall or a fence on it. God, it's some country to look at just the same. When you take a moment to lift your head to see past the mess we've made of it. So you are alive. Your son cried himself to sleep again last night. What do you want me to tell him? That you're in Ireland writing or thinking? Is, is that what you're doing? You're thinking? I'm sorry, Sarah. You're right. Lucas! Sarah? they do to you back there? You broke our mother's heart when you left, you know. Skeletons out here in these fields, you know. Skeletons of men every bit as smart as you or me.
You okay? Katie? Katie, what are you doing here? Well, I was just driving past and I, I saw the car. I did call your name. I waited for you, you know. Heartbroken. Everybody talk behind my back. Poor wee girl. Left behind like that. They all said you were no good. But I defended you. Every chance I got, I defended you. I waited. Here, Kitty, you should go. Maybe you should go. Go back to America before something bad happens. Fine, I'll leave. Yes, you leave. Go. Go back to America. I don't even know what you came back here for. <sighs> Get the fuck off me! There's that fucking stray again. Here, doggy. that thing in a bag and throw it in the boot of the car. Much are they? Temper fiber. Yeah. We're already up to five hundred pounds and dinner for two at Kelly's Inn. So some lucky duck is going home today. A very happy camper, I can tell you. That's great. Thank you. Thanks. Father Donnelly, come on down onto the field. Father Donnelly, there he is. Good man. Come on down onto the field. Come on ahead. Good man. Good man. Dig deep, Father. Certainly will. <sighs> this is a bit awkward. Matt Donnelly. Well, come on down here and get your prize. Come on. Matt Donnelly, congratulations. congratulations. Just, Just back, back from America. Thanks. Who said that? No, 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 let's, let's not, not be, be sore, sore losers. losers. Matt, Matt won fair and, and square. square. Well, well done, Matt. Matt. Dinner, Dinner for two at Kelly's Inn. Inn. If you don't have a date, I myself am available to eat. You better watch yourself, Yank. Because if I ever hear you near my wife again, I'm gonna gut you like a fucking pig.
Jesus Christ, you frightened the life out of me. What are you doing sitting here in the dark? Hello, Katie. You okay? Because you're being a bit weird. Have you been a good girl? I don't like this stuff and I'm going to put the I said! Has my wee Kitty been a good wee girl? Because if I find out that you went and done something really, really fucking stupid, Daddy's going to be so angry with his wee girl. Are you going to beat me with that? How did you get here? I walked. Let me get you a towel. I won't be needing a towel. I like being wet. Are you working on another book? I read your last one too, you know. Cinder's Landing. I loved that book. Is this one a love story too? I don't know. Am I in it yet? Please. Are you nervous about me touching your stuff? Why? What do you think I'm gonna do to you? Relax. Time wisely, never say goodbye Cause we will always meet again On the other side, so Please tell me something I don't already know Please take me far away To a place I do not know Half the bloody parish is here We should say mass in here on a Sunday morning We could charge for the wine Well, it be I'll have a pint To my wee brother Matt, the writer, to his new book, 
into a safe return to his family in America. To your new book? You late for an appointment? What do you not think about writing one about growing up in Tyrone? Uh, like that, um, what was that called? Angela's Ashes. Yeah, Matt. Why don't you write us a story about your miserable Northern Ireland childhood? Start with the terrible baiting you took in primary school. That's a good one. You beat me unconscious in a room full of kids. So, who can tell me something about France? You, Donald, stand up. What's the first thing that pops into your head when I say France? Onions. <laughs> what can God's name make you think of onions? I've seen it in the television, sir. You saw onions on the television? It was a cartoon about France. The man had onions around his neck. Garlic. He had a string of garlic around his neck. Is that what you saw? I suppose so, sir. Stop mugging. Speak up. Yes. Don't you shout at me! You yell at me in my classroom! Stop! Leave him alone! Kenny Corrigan, get back to your seat! Leave him alone! Get back to your seat, Kenny Corrigan! This is not over, asshole. Nice wee house. Jesus, what are you doing here? Don't be mad at me, Matty. Well, you're my fucking house! Oh, Matty! I'm your friend, Matty. Matty, no. No. Matty. What are you doing here, Potty? I heard, I heard you were telling stories, Matty. That's good. Hey. 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 You remember that time in Owen Cooney's class? Remember you got beat up? <laughs> Remember? Pa Potty said. Pa Potty said. No, I remember it was Katie saved me. No, no, no. Pa Potty, Potty, pa Potty said. Pa Potty said. Nine, 1991, August 26th, 2 p.m. I had a blue shirt on me. You remember your blue shirt, Matty? You remember your blue shirt? I remember. the priest. Marry. Declan's mad at you, Marry. Declan's very mad at you.
What did we party want? Borrowed some sugar. Are you all right, Matt? Look at the state of you. I'm trying to write. This place smells like a bloody brewery. Don't come on here to lecture me, Jerry! Or what? You'll run away again? I didn't run away! For a writer, you're not too fond of hearing the truth, Matty. And for God's sake, will you tidy this place up a bit? Your mother didn't raise you to be a tramp. An Irish man in America, an American in Ireland, betrayed by a brogue on one side, eternal optimism on the other. I am native in neither, easily silence both here and there. I live now in the parish of memory, create castles out of my childhood. Fly my Yankee tinge brogue is my flag. I have become one of the ghost Irish. Those who moved away. Those with a heart that will never be fully at rest. That's where you're wrong, asshole, because as far as I'm concerned, I can do whatever I like here. I earned my right to stay in this country. I stayed and I fought. And what did you do? You ran away to America and you left the fighting to the real men. Please, please, Deco. You don't think I wanted to run? You don't think that I wanted to escape? You don't deserve to live here. And you don't deserve Katie. Go home, Yank.
Don't start. I need you to come with me. Where are we going? You'll find out when we get there. Come on. Let's go. Are you visiting someone? No. You are. Who am I visiting? Master Cooney. I thought he was dead. That's his house over there. No way. There's a part of your past in that house. Do yourself a favor. Go over there, knock on the door, and face it for once. It's time to stop running away from it all. to see Master Cooney. Okay, come on. I'll take you to him. you to sit down on your feet. Kathleen? No, 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 no. She, she went downstairs. You're okay. Donnelly. Oh, Donnelly. Good boy. Oh, you are... You are a good boy. I've carried you around with me my whole life. Now look at you. Not much to look at now. Age. They don't teach you that at school. They should do. Uh, 92 years on this planet. And the only thing I've learned with complete certainty is you grow old and you die. I... I did my best. He wrote a book. I read it. You did? 
You're all proud of you. I was proud of you. And you will write another book. I don't think I've got another one on me. You will write. You will write. Home. Home. Seen from the window of a plane, she is a patchwork quilt. Little square fields of green stitched together by thin rows of thorns. Spring green, fern green, forest green, pine, sea and shamrock green. From above she is clean, mystical, magical to behold. That is her first great act of deceit. Her lush rolling beauty, the first betrayal of her truth. For on the ground, and deeper still, buried beneath that verdant lawn, is her pain. Underneath, there is blood. What price had the past exacted on each of us? Mother, Cooney, Katie, Declan. Where have you been all evening? No, no, Declan. Look. They're daffodils. You used to love daffodils. Remember? Please don't leave me. What did any of it mean? Catholic, Protestant, Irish, English. Words designated to keep us apart. Words with borders all their own. Each one of us armed and insulated with a version of the past we deemed to be true. Holding each other at arm's length over a flag or some unresolved hurt. How many lives is a field worth? No one escaped the wound. Each of us carry a scar. Declan had chosen the gun. I must honor this pen. Invite small miracles into the incubator of my heart. Come home to the poetry of myself. It was time for me to let go of the past, of the wreckage I'd been wearing like a suit of armor. I too had lost sight of what was in front of me. Family, friends, forests and fern, daffodils and birdsong, rivers and fields, nettle, rose and thorn hedge. Fog and foxtrot, mountains, moss and meadows. A heart haunted by the ghosts of poets and rebels. Sir, I love you. Give Lucas a hug for me. I'm coming. I'm 
coming home. Trees 
Stay.